eight fitness myths that you can ignore if you're trying to lose fat and gain muscle and become the healthiest version of yourself. My name is Fritz Horstman. I'm the CEO of Green Fit Club, where we help people transform their bodies and health. And I'm a trainer and health coach. And I've been doing this for years and years. And these myths, they just keep on coming back and back. And I want to make this video so you don't fall into the trap of these myths. And instead, you can ignore them and do the right thing. So my promise with this video is I'm going to explain these eight myths to you, how to avoid them, what to do instead. And then you'll be able to save you years of struggle, save you a lot of money on the wrong equipment and the wrong food, and instead do the right thing right after this video. And again, I wish I knew this when I started my fitness journey almost a decade ago. And a lot of my members and clients wish they knew this as well before they started working with us. But you get this for free. So let's have our end. So the first myth that a lot of people think is true is carbs and sugar alone make you fat, which you see here on the infographic. And carbs are still demonized in the fitness space, in the health space, and sugar as well. Now, is that alone the reason why someone is gaining weight? No, it's not. In fact, I eat carbs and I eat sugar every day and I'm losing fat every day, just like our clients as well. Now, what's, where does this come from? Uh, a lot of people think that carbs and sugar trigger fat gain just because when you eat bread and pasta, that is the reason the body takes up carbs easier and as body fat storage, which is just not true. In fact, carbs are essential for fitness results. Okay? A lot of people try a low-carb diet and end up crashing and burning because they don't have energy in their workouts, they're tired all day, and it's not sustainable. Right? Carbs are necessary. They fuel your workouts because they fill up our glycogen stores, which our body uses when we work out to actually be strong and have energy. So also, sugar also gets demonized. Obviously, we don't want to eat refined sugar and all these sugary snacks all day, every day. But you got to realize that in the, in the end, everything in our body, like our body cannot tell the difference between sweet potato or a candy bar, right? It's still glucose at the end of the day in our body. Now, there's just certain differences in certain carbs. Some are slow digesting, some are fast digesting, fast acting. And you want to definitely focus more on slow acting carbs like potatoes, you know, vegetables, rice. White rice is more fast acting, but those are more of the slow acting lentils as well. And then there's fast acting ones like um, yeah, candy bar or cereal. Those also have their place, but again, need to be set up the right way in the diet to actually make it work. But the first myth, definitely don't be afraid of carbs. Yes, limit your refined sugar intake, but again, it's not the only reason why someone's getting fat. In fact, carbs are needed to actually be fit and healthy. You just gotta make sure it's in the right amounts and you still stay in a caloric deficit. So, brings me to point number two, which, which is the myth of the more fruit you eat, the better it is. Okay, and I want to preface this by saying that fruit is obviously super healthy for you, high in nutrients, high in antioxidants, and we all know we should eat them. At least four servings a day is what I recommend. However, the more you eat, the better you, you the healthier you get. That's sometimes what I see online. Definitely complete BS because fruit has calories too, right? So if you keep on eating bananas and mango and kiwis like the whole day, you're gonna overshoot your calories again, and then that ends up with weight gain, which you want to avoid because fruit has calories too, right? Fruit sugar is another conversation to be had. It's definitely healthier coming from fruit, right? So you don't need to be afraid there. But if you have copious amounts, like eight servings and beyond, right? Fruit sugar also becomes something to be mindful of, and we want to make sure we don't have high blood sugar, all right? So a lot of people eat a lot of fruit. What they experience is they eat a lot of fruit, they have these huge spikes in blood sugar, and then they crash and burn, and then their body just goes through a roller coaster of, of energy and it's not healthy, right? So this is also something to be mindful of, but definitely have four servings a day at least. Now the third myth I see still is that protein shakes are only for bodybuilders. That's what I see online. 
yeah, I don't need to drink a protein shake. This is just for the meatheads, for the bodybuilders. And that's definitely not the case. Protein shakes are insanely helpful for everyone, especially if you're trying to hit your protein goals on a plant-based diet. So if you're cutting out meat and, and dairy and all animal sources most of the time, you are having a bit of a harder time to hit your protein goals. And protein shakes are the best way to still hit those goals. So just having two scoops of protein powder, putting it in a smoothie. Now what's important here, protein shakes, obviously what's that? What's the definition of a protein shake? It could be just water and protein powder, which I prefer as a, as a quick snack. But it could also be with fruit, with some nut butter, obviously, and um, some other things in there. And that's great as well, right? If you are struggling to get your vegetables and your fruit in, try having a smoothie, try having a shake with, with a protein powder, and you have a much easier time getting your nutrients and your protein in as well, all right? Myth number four, I see this coming up constantly still. Women shouldn't lift heavy weights. Maybe you're a woman watching this, maybe you've heard this before. And the main argument here, the main fear is that women will end up looking manly when they start lifting weights, okay? Obviously, as a woman, you don't wanna look like a man or bulky. The goal is for you to look toned and slim. Now, the problem is a lot of women think cardio is a solution or a bunch of yoga. And while those things are good too, if you really want to have a toned physique, meaning have the muscle definition, have the toned legs, you need to do strength training. Because the resistance you put your body through with strength training will actually tone up the muscle. So toning is actually muscle growth. Okay? And the thing is, it's impossible for you to look like a man because you don't have the same genetic and hormonal makeup like a man. So don't be afraid of that. And if you're worried about developing too big of a quads, right, which I sometimes hear, don't worry about it either because if your trainer is a good trainer and sets up your training for a female specific, which we do in our program, the Green Fit Club, then you're able to get tone and lean without developing huge quads, all right? So in fact, if you're currently a woman watching this and you are not seeing results, you feel like your metabolism is slow, you feel like you have to eat lower amounts of calories, you feel like you're not really moving forward, like you're treading in the water and like you're not seeing any progress, it's probably because you're not building an asset, you're not building muscle mass, which weightlifting will do. So please, <laughs> please start weightlifting and with a bunch of examples in our program on women who are crushing it, not just toning up, but also feeling stronger, feeling more empowered, being able to play with the kids, carrying the kids, all right? So heavy, heavy lifting is, is great for you. Now, myth number five is you should prioritize cardio for fat loss, which, again, is a prevalent thing still around. And while cardio is a great tool to increase your calories you burn and accelerate your weight loss, please don't forget that we want fat loss, we don't want muscle loss. Now, if you only do cardio as your main activity level, yes, you will lose a bunch of weight, but it might also come from your muscle that you're losing because you're not stimulating any muscle growth, right? You're not stimulating any muscle. As if you're just running, why are runners so skinny usually? Because they are not stimulating any muscle. And that's a problem if you're trying to lose fat because then you end up looking skinny and you end up looking weak and you also will be weak. So you won't be able to pick up your kids, you won't be able to pick up the, the groceries, whatever it might be, or do any housework because you're just doing cardio. And at the same time, what I said before as well, is a big message of mine always, cardio doesn't build an asset. Cardio is just, you go in, you burn the calories, and then you leave, right? And you eat the calories back. With strength training, you're actually building an asset and you're building muscle, so you're going inside the gym, you're working out, and you are building muscle, which will stay with you for a long period of time, which will then lead to prolonged results, a better metabolism, and that's why cardio can be used strategically, but strength training will be the longer term solution. Not even to say that as you age, muscle becomes more and more and more important um, as muscle loss increases and protein like your body uses protein less efficiently as you age as well. So please, that's the strength training. Doesn't matter if you're a man or woman. Now myth number six is that the step machine will help you build a bigger booty. Okay, again for women here, 
you've probably seen this woman on a step, a step machine swinging the legs back and you think that that builds the muscle in the booty and it's not. It is a cardio based machine and yes, obviously taking a stair master versus just walking a treadmill will engage more booty, but the only way a booty grows is through muscle stimulation through progressive overload. So progressive overload means you're going to the gym, you're picking your weights and you're doing glute exercises that actually include, uh, engage your glute muscle. I have a whole video on this on my YouTube, the glute masterclass. It's hip thrust, it's the kickbacks, it's sometimes the squats as well, it's the Romanian deadlifts. If you don't do these exercises, then you cannot expect any glute growth. And if you only do Stairmaster for your, for your glutes, in addition, maybe only cardio as well, what's going to happen is you're going to end up having a skinny, skinny booty. <laughs> you're going to have a small and skinny booty, which is fine if you want that. But if you want to have a toned and peachy one, you know, do some strength training, like I said. Now, myth number seven, as we are almost landing this plane here, is sit-ups and crunches will help you lose belly fat. So I have to break it to you. Unfortunately, this is a big, big lie, a big myth. And the way our body works is, unfortunately, we cannot spot reduce body fat. So it doesn't matter how many crunches you make, it doesn't matter how many planks you do, your belly fat will still be there. It will not go anywhere if you're not creating a caloric deficit with your diet. I had to break it to you. But exercise does not burn fat, okay? Just because you're doing a bunch of arm movements doesn't mean you burn fat on your arms. Just because you're doing a bunch of crunches doesn't mean you burn fat on your, on your belly, okay? It is good to build muscle there, so if you wanna have a six pack and have a lean and toned core, do your crunches. I mean, it's better exercises actually than crunches. Crunches are very bad for your lower back. I would rather do leg raises or um, I would either do, sometimes they have these crunch machines in the gym, which are better for you as well. Ab wheels, one of my favorites, a bit more advanced. But yeah, if you wanna lose belly fat, you gotta lose it by creating a caloric deficit and not by doing crunches. And if you're older, like in your 40s and beyond, I would even have you avoid doing crunches in the first place to keep your lower back healthy, all right? And the last myth here, number eight, is that you only need to eat 60 grams of protein per day. This is the RDA recommendation, and obviously this depends on your you know, body weight, but for most people, it end up being around 60 grams, maybe 80 grams, and that is just not enough. I could do a whole video on this, and I will, but protein is so important especially if you're in the age group in your 30s, 40s, 50s, and beyond, it becomes more important the older you get, right? All of us lose muscle mass as we age. All of our bodies become less efficient at handling protein as we age. And we also become more sedentary. So if you don't eat your protein, what's gonna happen is you're gonna lose muscle mass, you're gonna be hungry all day, and you're gonna damage your metabolism, right? Because our metabolism is created through muscle mass. And if we lose muscle mass, our metabolism goes down and our energy burning goes down too, which will make everything in your life harder. So please eat your protein. How much exactly you need depends on your needs. This is what we do in our Green Fit Club. We specialize in setting up high protein diets, plant-based for our clients who want to really transform their health once and for all and protein is a key ingredient there. And with our recipes, our meal plans, it makes it easy for them to achieve those, those goals. How much do you now need, Fritz? Give me a number. Okay, let me give you a number. You need to be between 0.6 to one gram per pound of body weight, okay? There you have it. You have a range. That's all I can give you for now. If you are out of this range, you're doing bad. If you're in this range, you're doing good. However, again, this really depends on your current physique, your goals, your age. So that needs to be customized. It needs to be customized and customly set up for you. We can't just give you a random number right now. Uh, I don't want to do that. So at the same time, I gave you a range. So look at that. If you want the exact number, you can apply to work with us. 
in our program. So those are the eight fitness myths to ignore, right? You can ignore all these and I explain why. And trust me, knowing this, you saved years of your life, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars spent on the wrong stuff. And I hope you're now able and ready to do the right thing for yourself. And if you found this video helpful, please leave a comment below. Maybe comment below which of the myths you are ready to leave behind and you still have been believing in. And leave a thumbs up as well and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a video. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.